Welcome back to the Tip of the Iceberg podcast, brought to you as always by Inside the Penguins. Just a little pull behind the curtain here. I had the rundown all set, and this next segment was not anywhere to be found because I hadn't heard this yet. I hadn't seen this yet. And then Nick Horwat just sent this to me and got me all revved up at 7.30 in the morning on a, on a Thursday morning, and uh, we're going to have to discuss it here. TSN's Brian Hayes is pleading to get Sidney Crosby out of Pittsburgh, saying, quote, I want to see him chasing Stanley Cups. I believe he's already a lock, top 10 player of all time. I think he could make a solid case for being top five. And I think if he follows in the footsteps of Tom Brady, goes somewhere else, wins a cup, that is going to make the case for him to get into the top five of all time. I have plenty to say on this, but Horwat, I'll let you say your piece first on Brian Hayes, in my opinion, making an idiot of himself on Sports Center in Canada. So <clears throat> I'll just kind of leave it at uh, this is like we always discuss. It is uh, media north of the border. Yep. Once again, asking Sidney Crosby to be traded out of Pittsburgh. This is some, This is a tale as old as time. They've been uh, banging the drum for this sort of thing since before they won the back to back cups in fifteen or er, in uh, sixteen and seventeen. So this is nothing new. Uh, my thought process on it is um, I like hearing what these guys have to say just because sometimes they do come up with some pretty wild, uh, some pretty interesting comparisons, like the Tom Brady one. I'll take the Tom Brady comparison in one way, and that is they are athletes at the in their later stages of their careers still playing at the top of their game. I will not take the com- the, the comparison of – shipping one of them off to another town just to win a championship. It's phenomenal that Tom Brady did that. It's not like he played for the Steelers at any point or for a football team I root for at any point. In fact, he played played for teams I root against most of his career. Mm. Um, But I had always respected Tom Brady for his work. That was a different situation, though. And now here we are with Sidney Crosby, again, playing like Tom Brady, aging into his late 30s and still playing at an MVP level. so there's that comparison there, and I thought the even funnier part, the one that I, the 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 mark that I really stuck to, and I I actually had a giggle at was when uh, Hayes said that a uh, a good destination for him would be the Boston Bruins because they need a top line center and they have a, and this is the one that got me a history of playoff success, <laughs> buddy. They lost to the Panthers last year. <laughs> in the first round after having a record-breaking regular season. Um, And the Penguins have won three in the Crosby era while the Bruins have won once. So the playoff success aspect of it, no. But at the end of the day, too, I brush most of what uh, Canadian reporters say about Sidney Crosby just right off my shoulder. Yeah, I don't know if they can look at that with with an eye of just – right down the middle. Uh, I think the Tom Brady thing was a new flavor of idiocy that was brought into this organization or this conversation here. I mean, it's miles off. I get it. Yeah. They're both what you said. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sidney Crosby is probably the Tom Brady of the NHL right now. He has the cups, more cups than most people in the NHL right now, at least top line stars and, and obviously certainly captains in this league. He has the most, I think I'd have to go back through and look, but he is, he is the aging star that doesn't stop performing at a high level i get that but tom brady always had that aura of well it was it brady or was it belichick was it brady that got them six super bowl rings or was it belichick belichick considered widely and i would agree greatest coach in the history of the nfl while mike sullivan is from boston he's not bill freaking belichick all right there is no question as to whether or not crosby played a major part in the Pittsburgh Penguins Stanley Cup runs. Yeah, he didn't get the playoff MVP in 2009, but he got it in 2016. He got it in 2017. And say what you will, he was a major part of those Stanley Cup runs. Maybe Phil Kessel deserved it in 2016 over Sidney Crosby, but that's the voters' problem. It's not that Sidney Crosby didn't perform. Sidney Crosby has led this team throughout his entire career. There is no question as to who has led to the success of the Pittsburgh Penguins in the last 19 seasons. It is Sidney Crosby. Whereas in New England, there was always the question, is it Tom or is it Bill? 
That's not a question in Pittsburgh. This is not a viable reasoning for Sidney Crosby to need to go somewhere else to solidify his legacy. Sidney Crosby is, as you said, Brian, and I'm speaking directly to Brian Hayes here. As you said, he is a solidified top 10. He's a solidified top freaking five already. The only thing that he hasn't solidified in my eyes is Mount Rushmore because it's very hard to solidify that in the NHL. Wayne Gretzky was the great one. Mario Lemieux was also, you know, one of the top two. Yarmir Yager can get in that discussion. Gordie Howe deserves to be in that discussion. So there's already four right there that you have to try to overcome. But here's the thing with Sidney Crosby. This isn't even Ray Bork. If you want to go to another Boston, he has three Stanley Cups. He doesn't need to go somewhere else to, to get over the hump. He's already gotten over the hump three different times. And right now what you're seeing is, no, he doesn't have a team around him, and we'll get to that in a second. But he's continuing to do things that we've not seen many people do in the history of this league. He's 36 years old. He's on pace for 50 goals, which would only be, as Brian mentioned, the second time that he's ever reached that mark in his career. If he gets to the 50-goal mark, I believe so, he'll get to 600 career goals. Wes Crosby tweeted about that yesterday. He's missed out on over 100 games of his prime, and he's still climbing up these NHL historic leaderboards with ease at the age of 36. Even if he doesn't win another Stanley Cup, as of right now, it looks like he's going to continue to climb up these leaderboards. I have my projections on how he could get into the top five all-time of scoring. He doesn't need to win another Stanley Cup to cement himself as a top five player in the history of the National Hockey League. He might need to win one. You know, Winning one certainly wouldn't help, but he can do other things in Pittsburgh that'll get him to that level. I get he wants to win Stanley Cups, but everything that I know about Sidney Crosby, at least over 18 years of watching him, five years of watching him very closely by doing this podcast, and two years of watching him very closely by writing for InsideThePenguins.com, nothing about anything I've seen in those years suggests to me that he's going to get ready to try to get his way out of Pittsburgh anytime soon. Man, I love that I was able just to pop my <clears throat> microphone on mute and let you go for a few minutes there. That'll be a great <laughs> clip to have on the uh, have on the internet. Um, you're right, and I, that's that's the the ending part of what you said. There's almost always why I <clears throat> excuse me brush these things just off the shoulder, let them talk for a minute, hear what they have to say, see if they can bring any tangible you know tangible reasoning or uh, any sort of good backing. You're right, Sidney Crosby is already a top five. I mean, the, the Mount Rushmore quote-unquote discussion is something that happened, I believe it was earlier this season already, mm -hmm. uh, or in the offseason, whatever it may have been. And you listed those names and still didn't even bring up the ideas of Bobby Orr. If you wanted to throw Mike Bossy up there, if you wanted to throw Mark Messier, Ron Francis, there's the list could go on. Mm -hmm. It is a tough thing to hit, you're right. And Crosby is definitely top 10, he's definitely top 5. And... Here's the thing too that <clears throat> because it's coming from and it all this so this this conversation almost always comes from uh, the north of the border media outlets. Ask anyone in the Pittsburgh room; they know he's not going anywhere, and that's the end of the conversation. You ask anyone that's been around the team for even a little bit; they understand this. It's just not happening. I think the dude's going to sign a contract July first this year to <laughs> yeah. solidify that he's not going anywhere. Yeah. So. Again, <clears throat> we're not going to dwell on this too much longer, I don't think, unless you've got more of a tangent to go on. Uh, no, I don't have a tangent to go on. I just have something else to discuss really quickly before we move over to Penguins Colony Council. I'm interested to see how this is received. Um, of course. But with that said, I do think the Penguins do need to get them some help. But here's the no, thing. Of course. Kyle Dubas has made a few good moves, a few not so good moves in six months as the Pittsburgh Penguins president and general manager. But he's had one offseason. Limited assets and stacked with horrid contracts. Mm -hmm. Like Jeff Carter's been fine on the fourth line. He's been fine. Yeah. He's all right. He's not worth three plus million dollars. You could allocate that much better than putting it on a fourth line right wing that plays primarily defensive hockey. So, you know, while Kyle Dubas, I'm not say, sitting here saying he's done God's work. He's done some pretty good things. He's done some pretty bad things at the same time. I don't think Sidney Crosby sitting here saying, well, I've run out of patience with you. Right. You know, I, I don't think you've done enough here. I let trade me right now. Like mm -hmm. the, the, the slap shot, Denny Lemieux trade me right effing now. Like that's not going to happen because Sidney Crosby's going to give Kyle Dubas time. If he wasn't, then he would have requested a trade right after Kyle Dubas was hired. He wants <laughs> to make it work here. This is a guy that lived with Mario Lemieux, the pillar of loyalty to the city of Pittsburgh and the Penguins organization. He lived with him for the first several years of his career. 
He's taken those values. He's had those values. He's going to carry those values through the remainder of his career. No questions asked in my eyes. For sure. For sure. So. It's the way he'll be around. Don't worry. Yeah. I mean, and if he if he does want to go, I don't think anybody in Pittsburgh is going to begrudge him for it. No, 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 no. We everyone can see what this the dire- can maybe see the direction this team is going. Yeah. This as long and everyone and here's the thing too is that everyone always says as long as Sidney Crosby is on this roster, you're going for it. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They don't have a choice but to go for it. Um we kind of mentioned last week, maybe you kind of sell off this year and go for it next year, but that's a different conversation for a different time. We'll see what happens after the, after the all-star break. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting, obviously after this season, what Sidney Crosby does heading into a contract year at the age of 37, or at if least he doesn't going already to be, have a new one. If he doesn't already have a new one. Yeah. Listen, you got to at least get to July 1st before you can sign one. So there's going to be some speculation in the next four months, five months, whenever it is, but you know, it might be put abruptly to an end on july 1st at noon like yep. the first move that happens on free agency day is wow they they signed Sidney crosby still had a year left in his contract that that tracks 